Hello, today I will be reviewing two very popular cashback credit cards. The Capital One Quicksilver versus Chase Freedom Unlimited. If you want to know which is the best card, stick around. Welcome if this is your first time, welcome back if it's not. Today I'm doing a comparison of two very popular cashback credit cards, Capital One Quicksilver versus Chase Freedom Unlimited. Which is the better card? Stay till the end and find out. Hi, so I picked the Capital One Quicksilver and the Chase Freedom Unlimited card because these are two very simple, straightforward cashback credit cards. They both earn 1.5% on all purchases. So there really isn't anything complicated with this kind of cashback credit card. So I will, in this video, go over different aspects of each card and things that you may want to be aware of before you decide to apply for a cashback credit card. So let's get started. Okay, so this is a very simple, straightforward cashback credit card. It is really geared towards people that are looking for a simple type of reward credit card. Both the Capital One Quicksilver MasterCard and the Freedom Chase Unlimited Visa offer 1.5% cash back on all your purchases. This is also a great card for people that have different reward cards that are good for specific categories. There are times when you make purchases that don't fit in a certain niche in a category and this is when using one of these two cards, either Quicksilver or the Freedom Unlimited, is a good idea because you will receive 1.5% versus the typical 1% cash back you receive on those other specialty cards when you make purchases outside a specific category for those reward cards. So I myself have the Capital One Quicksilver card and it is a card I find myself using time and time again. It has always been an easy, straightforward credit card to use. And that's why I decided that we should discuss it today. And that's why I'm talking about the, the Chase Freedom Unlimited because they are nearly the same. But they're not exactly the same and I will talk about that in this video. So the question is, have I overthought all of this once again? and also provided you with an article on creditfast.com. Of course I have. And you can find the link to that article in the description below this video. And you'll see that I have covered things in this article that I haven't covered in this video and vice versa. So if you want to see the complete picture, visit that article and you'll find that this video is also located in the article. So Quicksilver and Freedom Unlimited are very similar credit cards. And one difference that means a lot to me is that the Capital One Quicksilver card has no foreign transaction fees. And since getting the Capital One Quicksilver card, I have been out of the country twice and I have used the Quicksilver card with ease with all my purchases, I earned my 1.5% cash back with no foreign transaction fees. But unfortunately, the Freedom Unlimited card does charge 3% foreign transaction fees. So if traveling out of country is important to you, you might want to consider the Capital One Quicksilver or look to see what other credit cards you have that do not charge foreign transaction fees. Something very important to point out is that the Chase Freedom Unlimited card is part of the Chase 524 rule. Simply what the Chase 524 rule is, is that if you applied and got approved for five credit cards in 24 months, you will not be able to get approved for the Chase Freedom Unlimited card even if you have very good to excellent credit. 
The Capital One credit card company doesn't have a rule like this, so the Capital One Quicksilver card in this case would be a better option for you. So if you want to know more about the Chase 524 rule, I do have an article about it that goes into more details and I list which Chase cards are part of it and which Chase cards are not. And I wish I knew about that three years ago because I was stung by the Chase 524 rule. At that time I wasn't running my blog creditfast.com and I wasn't doing this YouTube channel so I was out of the loop so I didn't know about it. And when you apply for these cards if they are part of the 524 rule unfortunately and I've never seen this they never let the people applying they never make them aware of this. So this is why I'm telling you this today. There's no reason to ever apply for a credit card that you simply will not get approved for and the only thing you're going to be left is with a hard credit inquiry, an unnecessary hard credit inquiry. And the funny thing about it was that if I had known because I had applied for the Amazon Chase Visa card, that ended up being my fifth card. If I had applied for the United card a few days before, I probably would have the Chase United card right now, but I don't. It would have been better for me to apply for the Chase United card first because that the Amazon Visa card that is also issued by Chase, but the Amazon Visa card issued by Chase is not part of 524. So it wouldn't have mattered if it was the sixth credit card. So if you want to know which credit cards are affected, visit my article and I list the cards that are affected by 524 and the Chase cards that are not. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a really important thing that you need to know about the Capital One Quicksilver card. There are actually two Capital One Quicksilver cards. One is for fair credit and one is for good credit. Now, the one for good credit has no annual fee, but the one for fair credit does. So if you have good credit, make sure that you apply for the Capital One Quicksilver without the annual fee. And if you have fair credit, do not apply for the Capital One Quicksilver card for fair credit. And I can tell you this from my own personal experience that there is no need to. I did a video last year on the Capital One Platinum MasterCard and in it I described how I used that card to rebuild my credit. And with that, the Capital One Platinum card is a no annual fee. And when I applied for it and got approved, I had that card for just a few months, no more than three months. And what happened was after I spoke to somebody at customer service for an unrelated issue, they asked me if I wanted to product change my Capital One Platinum card to the Capital One Quicksilver card. And of course I did. So they product changed it, the 1.5% cash back with no annual fee. So this is the route I suggest if you have fair credit. Get the Capital One Platinum card and try to product change it. Sometimes I've, I've heard from people that you can't always do it, but a lot of people that watch this channel have told me in the comments section that they were able to do a product change. And one one viewer was able to get the Capital One Venture card. So do it that way and you won't have to pay the annual fee. So like I said, I don't have the Chase Freedom Unlimited and clearly the reason why is that I'm disqualified because of the Chase 524 rule. But if you have the Chase Freedom Unlimited, please leave a comment below and let us know how you like it just tell us about how it is to be a card holder, any kind of uh, unique perks or quirks with this card. We'd like to know. Even better, if you have both the Quicksilver and the Freedom Unlimited, uh, comment below and tell us uh, 
the, the differences and which card you actually like better and if you had to choose which card you would rather have. So like I said in the beginning of the video, Quicksilver and Freedom Unlimited are just, they're great cards, but you can use other cards to get more rewards. And for me, one of the main things I do is I like dining a lot, and rather than just earning 1.5%, I use two credit cards to earn the maximum amount of dining rewards. I have the Fifth Third Trio MasterCard, and it's very similar and you can do the same thing with a Capital One Saver card. I did a video comparing those two cards. And the other card I have is the Discover It card, which offers 5% cash back, usually third quarter, on dining. So nine months out of the year, I earn 3% cash back on dining, and three months I earn 5% and I created a playlist above and there's three videos in this playlist. If you watch all three videos in my dining playlist, you will know how to completely maximize the amount of rewards you could possibly earn simply by dining. One video is on the Fifth Third Trio MasterCard and I compare that card to the Capital One Saver card. So they both earn 3% cash back. There's also another saver card from Capital One that you can earn 4%, but that card has an annual fee. So depending on how much you're dining out, uh, you'd have to kind of weigh out the benefits to see if paying an annual fee will be worth it. And then I talk about the Dining Networks program. And that's a program that I've been using quite successfully for many years with earning extra rewards through dining. And I don't earn cash back with it, but I earn frequent flyer miles from United. And after that, if you use the restaurants that participate in the dining network, you can earn um, extra frequent flyer miles, but you can earn other types of rewards. I go into all the details in that video. Finally, I added for the third video one that wasn't even done by me, but was done by a very uh, well-known credit card YouTuber. That's Ask Sebi. And you probably already know about Ask Sebi. Uh, I like his channel. Ask Sebi is a good channel to look at too because he goes into a lot of detail about different credit cards. In his dining video, he went over some other programs that you can use. He did go over dining networks. He didn't go over it nearly as much as I did, but he goes over other ways that you can earn dining rewards. So just by watching these three informative videos, my two videos and Ask Sebi's video, you will get a really good idea how you can uh, increase the amount of reward you earn simply by dining. Okay, so which is the better card? Capital One Quicksilver versus Chase Freedom Unlimited? Well, I think you know the answer to this. They're nearly exactly the same. However, one might be better for you, so that would be the best card for you. So thank you for watching today. If you think I did a good job, please hit that like button. And think about subscribing. When you do, hit that bell notification. And when I make more content like this, it'll be sent to you. Thank you, and until next time.